blessings. Welcome forward to reasonings right here at the Tree of Life. I'm the Great Owl. And um, in this moment, I'm just going to be speaking on an offering that came to me, I must say, a few weeks ago. However, things have been so busy in my personal and professional space. I've barely had time to do a proper full sit down, you know, regular, you know, lecture like video, yeah, just presenting the information. I've done a lot of social, community, and family, all in the context and in the flow of family economics. And on my path, on my family's path to regaining our estates and regaining some of the traction and momentum we once had, not just as an individual family, but as a nation of families. A few days ago, maybe let's say a week ago, we celebrated um, our National Heroes Day. And so because the topic had come to me before and I thought to myself, well, Heroes Day had passed and this year was the first virtual Heroes Day ceremony I've ever experienced, hallelujah, in my entire life. And as such, I thought to myself, it reached to a point where all these thoughts about what my offering is seem to have filled the space within my mind. And well, here it is. I will be speaking, offering a word on the elders, the elder states women, the elder states men, the elders of our family, the elders of our families, the elders of our communities, the elders of our, of our history, of our heritage, our aboriginal elders, our ancestral path as individuals who have been so integral in what the family is, is becoming, and ultimately has been. Elders. When the Lord gave me this topic, I was noticing that there was um, several situations going on in terms of our geopolitical and social experience. And as a result of these sudden changes that came onto the spectrum, and I was, as an individual, trying to reset my own foundation, foundations and movement within this newly engineered society or the, the beginning process of its, you know, outpicturing. And so, I was in many moods of mind focusing on some directing outcome. And this drive towards this directive, this directed outcome was showing me something. I was saying to myself, if I am at the age that I am at, in the process of putting in proper foundations for a, a lasting family, and I was so moved by the experience we were all going through, the word came to me and said, imagine the elders who have once again become likened unto teenagers and children in terms of the care perception. They are not as advanced in the understanding of this changing society, though they have been good at adapting to survive for so long because the essence of being an elder is the experiential knowing, the experiential knowledge. And so, even though they are so experienced and know so much, in a changing environment that is making all of us feel so offset, even though even though there are many of us who are present in the understanding, the overstanding of the days that is upon us. Even though many elders 
had beliefs in and about the prophecies of the times that were coming up on them that we are now in. The Lord still showed me that just like I was so unnerved and off balance trying to recapitulate and balance myself and my family towards virginity, towards posterity, the elders were off balance because they had given already of their strength to this life and as such were needing more strength in directing from those of us who are strong and conscious. The elders amongst us, have, I have observed, are the first to coalesce to everything presented in the systematic spectrum because number one, they do not have the strength to resist these mind and physical manipulation that is happening. It is one thing when we are talking about theorems and belief systems. It's another thing when elders are seeing changes in the structure of society coming from the higher up, down. You cannot tell an elder in just the simplest sense that that's not a sign of what is authentic. It takes more for them to even understand underpinnings, the deep, intricate hidings under all these laws that are coming in, all these changes in behavior, all these protocols. Elders are vulnerable because they have given of their strength already. They are not at the point where they are the most strongest and as such they can be most effective in handling these situations. So we need to be duly considerate of the eldest members of our society. And I don't mean to push them further into the control mechanism and expropriate their property and their wealth, hallelujah, because of this vulnerability. This is the time for well-educated, conscious, loving members of the family and the friendship grouping, hallelujah, to take some interest in the welfare and the well-being of the elders around you, of the, of the elders within the community. Many members of the community have different states of mind. Why it is, why it is that some can stand some members, others can stand others. But if we have a mindset of looking out for the elders, it doesn't matter if you are looking out for those you preference. Just knowing that it becomes a culture, others will be looking out for others that you don't preference. Hallelujah. So it becomes just a culture to remember the eldest members of our communities, of our society. I know spiritual groupings does sometimes when it fits their whole outlook. I know religious grouping does it as well. And I know, so, I know that within my community and Within some of the churches I know that I've been, I was an Adventist, and I know that the Adventist um, church does visit its elder members, um, especially those who are incapacitated in one way or the other. And it's pretty a long walk from, you know, where the cars park to where I live to where others live. So it shows real care, hallelujah, and interest that um, these members of the church would, would pass through. You know, recently I go past through, and you know, my mother sent a message that they, they were asking for me and, you know, me and, me and Victoria was out. But the beautiful thing is that they are looking out for the elders. So, this is especially unique time we're in, where, again, things are changing so fast. The way that things were being done for the last 80 to 100 years, where most elders would have been familiar at some level, other, at the other intellectually, or just experientially, has changed in just a few months. And the way in which things were being done is now being done away with. And so there's a new learning curve. And it's all well and good that we are of a level of consciousness and awakening so that we can process information at an exponential rate and be able to recapitulate and rebalance ourselves in the most harmonious way within a short space of time. However, the elders of more discriminating situations and circumstances against them and as such, the lack of certain fundamental strength within just, you know, experience and just presence 
you know, it's sounding them wanting because number one, they would have given that unto their children. Hey, and I know how Aboriginal, aka black families work. So I know how we are as human beings, you know, we give a lot of energy unto our children, unto our generation. So that generation has to give back some of that strength, some of that love, some of that due course, recourse back to our parents and grandparents and to our elders. And some elders are economically well off, so it's not just about economic essence, it's about the care, it's about the time spent within the presence of these individuals to not just listen but relish the experience and to value the knowledge, the experiential knowledge, which by the way is more than just some theoretical knowledge, you know, that is denotation, even mixed with a lot of connotation and um, opinions, but that is an experiential um, source of information. Those are the living books of our history. And so here we go to the next point, because times are causing us to move fast in this cultural economic movement that's taking us away from the true family economics of understanding the elders are foundation stones of the family. So if the family, which we are at this point, thinks it is the family, it's confused because the family started before. That's why you're a part of a family. So your family isn't the family, right? Your family is a continuation of the family, right? That's all it is. That means it pre-exists you and what you're doing. So if you don't know the root and history of your family, the origin of your family, it's a problem because most people have misperceptions of who they are anyway and is thinking that they are somebody else, they came from somewhere else, and they came from others when they came from the people who have been here. And so because of that misunderstanding that has been constantly um, regurgitated, why has it been so easy? Because I told you, the systems and the authoritative nature of their information coming into the experience, many people just naturally say, that's who we are. That's where we're from. Even looking back at our heroes, many people do not understand that half of what the heroes were talking about was never enshrined in the understanding that they teach us of these heroes, right? They, that part was edited, right? And kind of cut out of the major part of the story, like what's been edited out of the Bible and all these things. The same type of thing. That even the fact that our elders were striving for full freedom, that to govern ourselves, to redefine everything that's been said to define us given to us by invaders these are part of what the elders were about the family was about that we don't even know that even the heroes enshrined enshrined as the motivation as the standard bearers of our sensibilities and our consciousness even them their information has been skewered to just satisfy the people who are creating the narrative so when you have people beginning to challenge the narrative you have others out there, sometimes, yeah, amongst the elders, who are going against the challenge of the narrative. They have become weak. They have become um, broken. They have become vassals of these power mongers and these power brokers because you might understand it in one way and I overstand it in another way that when humans feel isolated and abstracted away from what they think is a place of power and they've lived 40, 30, whatever amount of years that way, and then after a point, it is seemingly that there's an administration, there's a set of uh, power brokers who are letting you through the door, as it is spoken, or giving you a seat at the table. You coalesce and you forget your heritage and you destroy the rooting and groundation of your family for material or some kind of social-based premise of love or respect. You know, it's all hyperbole, it's all puffed up, it's all illusion, it's not real. So these inauthentic signs of praise, of acclamation, is distracting and destroying, fragmenting the family. These elders have gone astray from what their elders have taught them. And some people still believe and is still seeking approval, acceptance outside of family. And so because you're looking outside of family, community, nation, and state and destiny, you feel that when outsiders now give this sense of welcoming and approval because you cannot feel equal to that which is inadequate so that's a misperception anyhow but use it as it is when the outsiders come and make you feel as if you're at peace or you are worthy and you take the outsider's vision of reality and then torment your people distort reality within your people then the tabernacle of eldership has gone out of out of alignment and it needs to be realigned 
So the family has to be rooted and grounded in what it has always been rooted and grounded in, the ancient traditions and the continuity thereof. Our futures are born in our past. The path we have taken is the path of the elders. Let us respect true progenity, true traditions that are from our divine creator. Hallelujah. True traditions that lift us up instead of put us down or push us to the side or splinter us. Traditions that draw us into harmony. The elders who are in right alignment impart experiential truth. Truth born in ancestral heritage so you know where you're from, how long you've been here, why you're here, what you're doing here, when they, the invaders, came and when they started what they started. So you might say oral tradition, folk tales, folklore, but these are the heritage-based historical denotation of information being passed down because it is the living books which are the living records. However, people might think cosmogonies and so-called um, colloquial genetical information is not cosmology, right? And it's not genetic heritage. But that is just a joke. Respecting your elders will teach you that if you have been since the dawn of time, that is an unbroken line. Amen. Hallelujah. Get it. Get it. So what you need to remember is, if that's what it has been, start listening to your elders. Hearing them out. In the midst of all their experiences is history. Is how the family got to where it got to. Where the mistakes were made. Where the weaknesses came in and overpowered. Where destruction, distortion, disorientation came in and became premise and foundation of disorientation yeah? and complete out of alignment living. You can go into their information and see who lifted the family, who, who encouraged the family, who promoted family values that brought harmony, that brought strength of community, village growing the children, each family having a part and an attachment to the families of the community. Not just in terms of the intermarriages between these families, but also because of the fact that they breathe the same air within the same community. It's a part of the same land. The spirit of oneness does permeate. So even though modern community structures aren't giving the elders their true respect, deep inside the psyche we know honor thy mother and thy father that thy days on the earth may be longer we know that our progenity is we know this is the way for posterity however our society sometimes forgets and becomes so much postmodernist in their belief systems and trying to recapture an idea they thought they had that they do not recognize that now is the presence of reality and all is happening now and no matter how the language is presented you know when you've not been true to your parents your grandparents and you know when it's time to forgive you also know when it's time to preserve family heritage and history before they transcend. And the knowledge, the information that you will need to not only function as a confident, well-adjusted human being, but historically to rewrite the wrongs of the loss of our estate. See, these things are important to know where the documents are, yeah? that they may be preserved, that, that fires and stuff do not destroy our family heritage and history. These are things that will help us legally to maintain and to regain our estates that have been taken when indigenous rights fully becomes manifest in all ambits of reality. This newly re-engineered world is going away from things of the ancient, but it's coming right back based upon the virtue of the awakened spirit within individuals. And now we are understanding that family economics, that family is history, destiny. It's the presence of the Most High like God. It is where life is experienced, expressed. It is where life is created. So, as this is the essence of what it is, we too will become elders. The standards we set while we are now living will become the patterns that follow us. So there are some elders who are benefiting from misalignments of their activities and lifestyles and functions over the years. So it's not out of sync with what is reality. And yes, there are elders who are reaping great benefits and magnificent reward from the sacred. That gift is their deserving reward for being fortuitous in their understanding. 
being like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth their fruits in due season, male and female, he created them, created us. We are continuing their legacy, their history, their heritage, as we are, you know, becoming, continuing that legacy of family. That joy to know, that respect of rooting, growth, development, and continuation. Seed to fruit to seed. The tree of life in between that process of experience. Respecting the elder stateswomen and the elder statesmen. The family's stalwarts, the true progenitors in the family. That has the memory, and the heritage that stretches far back into time hundreds of years because it is passed from great grand to grand to grand and so as we are becoming the next generation may we live honorably that an honorable outcome will be our experience for our family to continue you know something that is resplendent and respectful we know we're not all at the most beautiful part and place in time and space and history and heritage however it is us that creates this reality of heritage history and culture so let us recreate what has already been created by respecting the true foundations in family. Don't go to the modern concepts, which is really designed by people who are distractions and, and invaders and out of sync entities anyway. So the essence of it is, when you go back to that which has been here the longest on earth, you will get closer to that which will live and will survive the longest, hallelujah, on earth. It's like children grown by grandparents carry on grandparents' morals and belief system, live longer, become great-grandparents themselves, and then pass the system on. It's a shame if we should lose it because a few of us in, along the path has been sucked into the mechanical systems of invader thought and forgetting root of original, original way of being. Until next time, this has been the great old reasoning writer of the Tree of Life. I just want to implore you in spirit, in truth, in all actuality, to respect your elders, honor your mother and your father that the days may be longer. And children, respect the fact that you have been a part of, you are a part of something that has been from the dawn of time. And there's no greater thing that you can touch right here. So let me say it again. If you are alive in this world, it means that that blood you have in you has been here, hallelujah, since the dawn of time. And never once in all rotation of time did it cease to exist. It was always in a living being, being transferred to another, recreating in offsprings. And so, how could you ever want to live and not know in reality that's actually the only foundation you actually have in this world that is the known reality we're talking about, not perceptions of it. So from your life and living, your great-grandparents, your, grand your, your great-ancestors, have been connected to the first man and the first woman from the dawn of time. Time immemorial, forwarding to now. Keep this line, this unbroken line of truth and love going. Until next time, once again, this has been the great old reasoning right here with your life. Continue to love and protect the elders, grow in the knowledge of our ancestors, the Aboriginal heritage and culture of the planet. Love and blessings.